vinyl records. Old school music fans grew up with them. For those who first experienced music through MP3s and streaming, vinyl offered a new way to physically hold albums they had grown attached to. I'm Matt Wardlaw for UCR, and today we're going to discuss some of the most expensive out-of-print albums on vinyl. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you'll receive future videos like this one as they become available. The arrival of the compact disc in the 80s took things from analog to digital, and fans appreciated having music in a form that was free of clicks and pops from vinyl, and also without the hiss of analog cassette tapes. So while the popularity and production of vinyl eventually faded at the beginning of the 90s, it never disappeared entirely, remaining popular both in Europe and with audiophiles across the planet. A worldwide resurgence began to kick in in 2009, and flashing forward to present day, you'd be hard-pressed to believe that vinyl ever really went away, unless you look at the price tag for new albums. And everything you've ever wanted on vinyl that never came out has finally been released. Okay, for classic rock fans, that's not true. Just take one look at the exorbitant prices of certain vinyl albums, like Motley Crue's one and only record with vocalist John Karabi. Released in 1994 on vinyl, but only in Europe, Copies of that original pressing fetch hundreds of dollars if you can find one. And there are many more examples. We've compiled the following list of some of the most vital classic rock albums that need to be released on Black Wax. 1973's Buckingham Nicks album introduced a duo who would have a huge impact on music's future, although it didn't happen right away. When Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks released the Buckingham Nicks album produced by Keith Olsen, the record unfortunately failed to find a mass audience, enjoying success in only certain regional pockets. Olsen famously played songs from the album for Mick Fleetwood, which planted a seed that eventually would bring Buckingham and Nix to Fleetwood Mac. In the years that have followed, Buckingham Nix has never been put out on CD, although a release was planned decades ago, and it's popped on and off the prospective release schedule for years since then. Buckingham and Nix reportedly own the masters for the album these days, so a reissue would be possible, and with the 50th anniversary of the record approaching next year, maybe we'll get lucky. In terms of the vinyl albums that we're talking about, out today, it's one of the most obtainable. You can find a copy on the low end for 20 to 35 bucks, but to give you an example of how that price can fluctuate, a mint copy of the record sold for $300 in 2021. For music fans who want a unique copy of the album, check out the Canadian Gatefold Pressing. On the opposite end of the spectrum, both musically and financially, you have Live Era 87 to 93, the first full length official live release from Guns N' Roses, which was pressed to vinyl on a 4 LP set when it was released in 1999. So cool, it's out there, right? Well, yeah, if you're willing to pay as much as $800 for a copy. It's so easy to wait for a reissue when you put it that way. The band's 1993 covers record, The Spaghetti Incident, is also a tough one to find. It was released on vinyl at the time the album came out, including an orange vinyl pressing here in the U.S. that goes for more than $200. It hasn't been reissued since then. Now, while we're on the GNR subject, let's talk about some of the Slash catalog on vinyl. The guitarist has two very underrated albums released with his band Slash's Snake Pit. 1995's It's 5 O'Clock Somewhere, and the follow-up, Ain't Life Grand, which was released in 2000. While the CD of the first album will set you back a mere dollar on the used circuit, the double LP vinyl goes for a lot more than that, with the European pressing pushing close to $250 for a used copy, while Ain't Life Grand has never been released on vinyl. We mentioned Motley Crue early on, and Motley, they've reissued their catalog time and time again, and in more recent years, often without any sort of meaningful bonus material. You can now get the majority of their albums on vinyl, except for 1994's self-titled Motley Crue album, their lone outing with singer John Karabi, and New Tattoo, which was released in 2000 at a time when drummer Tommy Lee was out of the lineup, replaced by former Ozzy Osbourne skinsman Randy Castillo, and eventually on the road, whole drummer Samantha Maloney. New Tattoo has never been available on LP, and the Karabi album only came out in Europe in 1994 and normally sells for as much as $400 when it does surface. So why haven't they reissued those two albums? One can speculate that because Vince wasn't involved on 1994's Motley and Tommy was out of the mix for New Tattoo, perhaps it's out of respect. Tool first announced plans to reissue their catalog on vinyl in 2017 and said that all of the albums would be covered by their reissue plans. It's no surprise that several years since that announcement, there's been no vinyl reissues. Although the band did finally release that new album they've been working on for a similarly long time. But as far as those vinyl reissues, one Reddit user commented that maybe the band is waiting for vinyl to go out of style again. Here's the bottom line. Until they do get around to putting their catalog out on LP, 
it will cost you a large sum of money to get their 1996 album Anima on vinyl. The double LP set has sold for nearly $1,400 on the used market, and if that price doesn't make you sober, well, it should. Van Halen fans have long been aware that when it comes to the Sammy Hagar era of the group, those albums are never part of the conversation when it comes to reissues. As we're examining the current state of the catalog, Mobile Fidelity has announced a new series of reissues of the first six VH albums with David Lee Roth, and you guessed it, Van Hagar is nowhere to be found. Vinyl copies of 5150 and OU812, the Red Rockers' first two albums with the group, are easily obtainable. But the remainder of the Van Hagar era could use a fresh look. 1991's For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, again, is one that came out only overseas, and that was also the case for 1995's Balance. For Unlawful can be yours on the secondary market for under 100 bucks, while Balance will set you back as much as $500 of big fat money to borrow one of the song titles from that album directly. And by the way, if we are seeking justice for the Gary Sharon era of Van Halen's career, it should be noted that Van Halen 3 has never been on vinyl. And the same is true for the Hagar era live, right here, right now, live record released in 1993. Let's talk about Aerosmith. Now, there are controversial opinions about the 80s and 90s output from the band compared to their classic 70s era. Put that to the side. Let's just assume that you would like to get copies of some of the band's more recent albums. Everything through 1989's Pump is fairly available, but it starts to get dodgy after that. 1993's Get a Grip came out on vinyl in Europe and is surprisingly affordable, available for under $100. The 2017 reissue of Get a Grip, however, is out of print and goes for a similar price, although colored vinyl versions have gone for hundreds. An OG European pressing of their 1997 album Nine Lives will set you back close to $300. 2001's Just Push Play goes for $200, and you're definitely jaded if you think we're paying that kind of money. However, the mini disc for that album can be had for $40. A note that 2012's Music from Another Dimension was issued on red vinyl in Europe and is somewhat reasonably priced at $40 for a double vinyl copy of that record. Robert Plant's catalog, both solo and with Led Zeppelin, is fairly well represented on vinyl, with a couple of key, and we think, important exceptions. Both albums that he did with his band The Strange Sensation, 2002's Dreamland, and 2005's The Mighty Rearranger are scarce, and unless you're having a really lucky day, you're not going to find them in the wild. Dreamland is sold for as high as nearly $700, according to Discogs, while The Mighty Rearranger fetches prices that will really make your wallet weep. That one has been known to go for over $1,100, a price that will mightily rearrange your finances. Last but certainly not least in our world, one word, Prince. Three more words, the Black Album. The album was prepared for release in 1987, withdrawn at the last minute, but not before actual copies had been pressed up. The copies were all to be destroyed, and as we know, that didn't happen, but the copies that did survive have set some price records, with one of them selling for more than $27,000. As the Prince estate and the labels involved continue to reissue albums, both released and unreleased in his body of work, we'd like to be able to easily add a reissue of the Black Album to our collection. So there's some expensive and rare vinyl that we'd like to see released. Find more stories by clicking the link in this video's description, and make sure to subscribe to our UCR channel here on YouTube for all of the best news and history of classic rock and pop culture.